We're working on fuel system today. We're filling the fuel tanks. Uh, we're pumping out from the bottom with a, um, a hose all the way to the bottom of the tank, make sure there's no water in the very bottom. We couldn't get the bung to come out on the bottom. Um, we're getting new filters. We're running all new fuel lines from the copper. It goes copper from here to the tank. We're hoping that part is good, but from everything from where the copper ends and goes forward, we're getting all new fuel lines, filters, fittings, all that stuff. Tyler's over there right now working on getting stuff extracted. You can check out his videos later at uh, Indiana Diesel. Check it out and uh, he'll show you how he's having success over there getting those broken studs out. Um, we got lots of stuff going on. All new hoses back here, coolant lines, radiator hose, all that stuff is gonna be new. Um, we got had to get this adapter plate from Gene Russell that's gonna allow us to fit a modern fan on here. This one's broken, but we're taking this to the machine shop to get a new one made uh, and actually a couple extras to have. Uh, things are going well though. So we have a whole box of uh, hoses and lines that he's going to get redone right here this morning. And he's going to get more fuel. Why well, didn't I spill some on the side of it? Oh, it's turning it already. Yeah. Oxy settling torch winds again. wanted to show some of the other structure of the bus here so this is a real heavy stress point back here this is where that rear motor mount comes in and again people were worried about the bus is going to fall apart and everything but every single rivet on here is perfectly attached still there's no wear there's no cracks i mean everything is there that's supposed to be there it's tight the only place that we had issue is where because this motor mount had been damaged and it caused it to vibrate and bang around too much that's why we had that there. But even under there, all the rivets on there, that's where it ripped out of. But everything else is nice and tight and secure in there. It's not an issue. All the other rivets on the structure are perfect. Only where that thing was vibrating and banging around did it rip through the aluminum. And there's no other issues. We're just gonna double reinforce it, get it back together. It will be perfect. It'll be stronger than it was new. Nobody needs to worry about that. This is a good solid bus. It had a couple issues. It had a wheel, you know, some tires mess up these wheel wells and stuff. Um, but like the, you know, where the leaf springs bolt on, the shackles, everything is tight, secure, wonderful, no issues. So it is a very good bones bus. It just has a few little issues going on. I do have this fan hub apart here. Um, this is where the fan blade mounts for the radiator. Um, this just needs to be uh, our new bearing on it and that's why one belt was tighter than the other because the bearing had some wobble to it so it wasn't as tight on the outside. You need to make sure that if you're working on silver sides that you never pull that with a jaw type puller. I don't know where I just said that. If you pull this with a jaw type puller you'll break it. It's just cast. Um, you have to use the kind of puller that goes into the threads there. Um, so this bearing is bad. Um, I have the part number in my book for the correct one. There's actually a few different ones that'll tell you that it cross-references to it, uh, but that's not what you want. The cross-reference numbers are not correct because the cross-reference numbers are not for a heavy-duty bearing, and there's not as many rollers in that bearing as there are in the heavy-duty one. So the bearing, the balls are farther apart. It's not a roller bearing, it's a ball bearing. Um, so the, the ones that have twice as many balls or whatever, uh, maybe not twice as many, but I think one has got like eight and the other one's got like 12 or something like that. Um, I have a whole video on it changing it and it tells you the right one to get. Um, but so if you have a silver sides, be careful what bearing you put on there because the regular bearing will wear out very, very fast. You might get 5,000 miles out of it. Uh, also, we went to a, we're going to a plastic fan that's gonna relieve a lot of weight on it. So it's not as much stress on the bearing as well. So if you go to a plastic fan, I haven't done that yet on my bus, but that is on my list of things to do probably in the next couple months. Somebody got chisel happy way too many times on this thing. Isn't that insane? Tyler said it looked like a beaver did it. Is that what you said? Send a double apprentice at it. <laughs> but seriously, how do you work on big trucks and not have a socket that size in your toolbox? Go back to playing with cars. Yeah. Crazy. Look at that. Yeah, right. he, 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 I said, he said, do you need a cap? I said, well, I don't need one, no. And he says, oh, we just decided to put a cap on there for you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that's well over an hour worth of prep work and welding. Just for 150 there. bucks to do all that, that is a steal. Yeah. So, nice job, guys. What was the name of their shop? That was Kent. 
Uh, Kent Welding. Kent Welding in, are they in Belpre? They're, they're in, Dur what starts with a D, Jared? Durant or Dur Davisville? Uh, D Davisville. Davisville. Yeah, Kent and Davisville. So they did a great job. They welded that back together, they fixed where we cut it, and they made us a new cap that was missing for the other side. So Tyler is trying to fix my mess up. Couldn't get one of the drive shaft cap bolts on. Uh, we removed the cap. It wanted to go in only crooked in there, and it's not very deep. And the bolt next to it is the one that was broken off previously when we went to take it apart. The bolt had been missing on it. So I think maybe it had a little extra stresses on it or something. So I had to cut a tap shorter to fit in the hole to try and just tap it out to clean it out. And as I was running that in, the tap snapped off flush with the top of the hole. And you can't get to it because it's back hidden behind a brake drum. We might have to pull the whole flange off the transmission to get to it. You making any progress on it, Tyler? Not really. Well, you've got it broke off in there. The high side is where I need to chisel me back here to get it to. Yeah. It's a mess up. This is what you get working on old shit. But we're making progress. The front hubs are back on. The brakes are back on. We replaced that brake shoe down there that was broken. Put new brake springs on. We did make a lot of progress. Jacob is removing the brake drum there on the transmission brake so that we can get to the flange for the transmission to remove that to fix the hole that was not threaded right and then I broke the tap in. <laughs> and it's not fun, right? It is not. <laughs> this is something interesting I just noticed. So this is the on my silver sides, my 3751. Uh, it says fuel oil on there, which, you know, I mean, they, both of them say that, fuel oil, you can kind of see it there. But over on Sage's bus, and this looks like it was from the factory, it actually says diesel fuel. Very interesting.